Welcome back to Everything Whiskey. I'm Callum. I'm Sam. And today we're having a look at the High West Bourbon. Alright, so we're looking today at a bourbon. Um, I mean, we've. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Lots of detail in this review. Um, we've done. Lots of bourbons lately, but I don't know. We just yeah. we just like the bourbons lately. Um, this is from High West. Um, it's a bourbon, but it's their American Prairie bourbon. Um, Do we know what that means? Yes. So this is in support of the Prairie Reserve in I think like Utah or something. I forget. Anyway, um, it's a it's a what's pronghorn. Is some sort of animal, and it's the prairie reserve is to help them yeah. regain their, you know, because they've lost like ninety percent of their population or something. Sam was reading this before we started this review, yeah. and you know, yeah, it sounded like a bloody wildlife documentary. Like, <laughs> uh, that's literally what it is, though. This is to support the prairie reserve for the pronghorn, you know, antelope damn deer things. I don't even know. We don't have um, them in Australia. Yeah, so. we don't have. Yeah, anyway. So that's what this is named after, that's why they make it. Um, I think they, I don't know if they support them monetarily or just kind of socially through marketing, but either way, it doesn't matter. Um, that's why they made They're doing this. good things. They're doing good things, or they're doing things. I don't even know if it's good. Anyway, <laughs> it, <laughs> it, this is a blend. So uh, High West are kind of, they're blenders basically. They um, It's a blend of straight bourbon whiskey. So this is, I'll, I'll read you the details. So, and for the main part of it, it for, okay, so there's two different um, distilleries that they're blending this particular bourbon from. Do you want to pour it while I talk? <laughs> I don't um, get this job very well. <laughs> so, um, they get from MGP, which is not a surprise, so Midwestern Grain Products, one of the biggest um, distilleries basically uh, in, in America. That whiskey that they uh, get from there is 75% corn, 21% rye, 4% ma uh, barley, malted yeah. barley. Uh, and that's from MGP. And then there's an undisclosed uh, distillery that they get their second one from for the blend. Mm -hmm. And that's 84% corn, eight rye, eight malted barley. Um, I don't, I would like to know where the other one comes from, but for some reason it's undisclosed. I think a lot of distilleries- Required no. another, no. or is that another? Yeah, uh, I a lot of <laughs> too many rules <laughs> with um, sourcing. I think distilleries have their say on if you can name it or not. So, say, oh. like, I make whiskey and you want to source it for your blend, but I don't know how good you are, so you can have you can take it and do what you want with it, but, but you I can't say that it's yeah. from me in case yeah. it's terrible. Batch um, number is 19J29, if anyone's yeah, interested. If anyone cares. So That's we'll what I was grabbing and we'll, uh, cracked my nose. We'll, we'll get onto the sacrifice the glass <laughs> with batch number. We'll I can't get believe that. I nose. can't believe that. The nose is um, just typical bourbon-y sweet, that dusty corn sweetness. Yeah. Um, it's quite prominent on this nose. There's like a kind of a, some sort of acidity, but not like... Not citrus acidity, more like a, an apple kind of acidity, the tanginess of an apple on the nose. Mm. But also, that could also be the um, the barrel bitterness at the same yeah. time. It's it's a pretty light nose, it's simple. Past the citrus, I do get like just generally green apple though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't know if I'm getting citrus, it's more just like some apple y. It's, yeah, it's just apple, I would say that, yeah. Yeah, some like red apple but also some barrel bitterness, and that's kind of confusing me which one is which. I don't know what I'm getting particularly. Taste it. I get more of a green apple note on the taste. Yeah, what I normally find in bourbon. Getting some hay and uh, freshly cut grass. The apple note is less so on the palate, but it's still really? there. I, I reckon. find it prominent. I reckon the sweetness is more kind of like caramel brown sugar sweetness and less like desserty apple kind of apple pie sweetness. No. Yeah. There's apple there but it's, it's less green apple, more red apple maybe. More of a... I don't know. The finish... The sugars finish, are definitely there. The though. sugars hold strong the whole way even yeah. in the finish and the other notes kind of ease off and you kind of get just more that hay note. The hay mm -hmm. and the sweetness. That dusty corn and hay and sweetness on the finish. That corn is so prominent on the nose, mm. like that dusty, yeah, dusty corn. 
well, what they say is 80, 85% corn on one of the mash bills or 70 something on the other as well. So it's, it's bourbon needs to be at least 51% corn. So there's no way you're going to get a, a little amount of corn in any sort of bourbon. But um, for this, you that corn sweetness, it's like yeah. a candy corn, like the lolly candy corn mm. kind of thing. And it's 46%, so like it's reasonable. I reckon this is yeah. fine. I, I wouldn't... It I, definitely holds up for 46 though. Yeah, like I was going to say, I think that the density of flavour and that kind of like alcohol spiky dance on your tongue mm. kind of thing is fine. I don't think it needs to be higher. I would love this. Like say, okay, if I was going to sell this, I would sell it at 46. But if I was going to drink this, I'd drink it at like 60. Just because I love high proof bourbon. I want to see what on class it, taste it at that, but I think for selling wise to getting the most people uh, at the point where they can enjoy it, I think 46 is probably a good way to go. Mm. I don't think it needs to be any higher to enjoy it. Yeah, cast might be a bit um, intense because it's already knows, quite intense. Who knows what would show through? Or dance, I should say, not intense. Like often when you raise the proof on a bourbon, you get kind of like the salty notes on top of it yeah. um, because of that heat. It's just, it's a good amount of layers, but it's not like. Damn, this is something I could sit with for a while. Yeah, I think this I is something I could sit with and enjoy, but not have to sip through. Yeah, I can for a see while. why they're so popular. Definitely. They're just hitting the mark. This is good. They're it's not good. Pushing the it's limit good or they're, not un- they're not like overwhelming or mm. underwhelming. They're just hitting. Yeah, the like that. I think they're doing a good job at like getting good bourbon to people who enjoy bourbon at the most like commonly enjoyed kind of section yeah. of the bourbon sure. spectrum. Um, but it's doing it well. I like it labeling as well. I like, like the, the old the, western the, the style. Bo- yeah, well, I mean, yeah, the, the bottle design, the glass has like little bubbles in it. They're not careful. Like it's mm. not got some nice rustic design to it. I don't know how much it'll focus. If you're in America, you've definitely seen High West at some point anyway. If you're in Australia, probably. You've probably seen it at some point. I don't know how. I haven't seen it all that much to be honest. To be fair. I see it at like Dan's and stuff. That's the only thing I see. Yeah, yeah. and it's the only one. What I like is the affordability of it um, for something that yeah. I normally associate with just being available in America. Because this was how much was it? Eighty bucks on special. What's it normally? Hundred. I guess that's a bit expensive. Yeah. Um, yeah, we got it for eighty without members at like Uncle Dan's. It's about a hundred ninety something. No one's gonna know what that means. Dan's if you're a membership in the bottle shop, you get. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know if I'd pay a hundred consistently. I'd pay a hundred again the first time, just oh, to yeah, taste sure. it, and I wouldn't be disappointed. I it's not going to be a, something that I constantly keep up at that price. I think really? I'd, even yeah, at, I, even at a hundred percent, hundred percent, even at a hundred dollars, I reckon this is fairly well suited for that price range. It's fine, but I can get 101, Wild Turkey 101 consistently for yeah, less. Yeah, you, you love high proof. Like for the yeah. average bourbon drinker, this hits so many levels. Um, and it's $100. Like we're, it's, it's, we're arguing about like subjective reality, which is just a ridiculous concept in yeah. itself. So it depends who you are, what you like. This is a good bourbon. I like it. I think it, it fits well. It's got a good amount of like density with its proof. How that one went? I, to be honest, I, I want to try more High West because oh, there's yeah. like a, the, the main three. There's the the Prairie Bourbon, which we got. There's the Double Rye, and then there's the Rendezvous Rye. Are they I want to common try. for Australians or common? Don't know. I, they're the ones that I noticed. They're the, the ones most, that we have. So I don't know yeah. if they're the most popular. I'm assuming if they're made up their way here, that they must be the most popular ones ever in America because they're the ones that make the most money, so they're banking on that. They're not going to sell an unpopular whiskey in America in Australia. So I'm assuming they're the main three. Um, we'll get to them eventually. We've got a, whis- a lot of whiskeys to go, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. But um, yeah. Uh, Alrighty, thank you very much for watching this episode of Everything Whiskey. Uh, if you liked it, leave us a like. If you want to see future episodes from us, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. If you know a bit more about the High West Distillery slash company, let us know. Uh, we'd like to know a bit more about it because it's a seemingly quite interesting and intriguing company. Um, Otherwise, we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. Cheers.